Howdy y'all, welcome back to the Black Sheep Meadow. We just started uh, filming a video for our firewood section and uh, I noticed that the chain that I was using wasn't as sharp as I'd like it to be for the video purposes. Uh, normally I'd still run that chain for, I don't know, at least a few more logs or so, but for video purposes, I wanted a sharp chain put on. And while we're here changing out the chain, I wanted to talk about uh, our equipment. Um, last week I had a uh, a friend of ours, or a viewer of the channel, actually came up and asked me. They said, uh, I believe it was a Labor Day weekend video. They said, hey, why, why is it that you use an Echo chainsaw? And uh, point blank, really, that's all I've ever grown up on. Uh, when I was young in my teenage years, I worked at a lot more shop that uh, sold Echo, serviced Echo. Uh, so I got really familiar with them. Uh, and I've stuck with it ever since. You know, nothing, uh, nothing against you still guys that are out there. I'm sure there's going to be some armchair quarterbacks. You know, still is the only way to go. Okay, that's fine. Uh, whatever you buy, if you're going to buy a, a something, you know, whatever it is on the, it doesn't necessarily have to be a chainsaw, any of your equipment. Uh, make sure it's commercial grade, you know. Um, there is, I don't even know if I can say this on YouTube or not, but there's some Mickey Mouse Walmart quality stuff. That's one of my favorite quotes out there. Uh, that is just, uh, it's not, it's not homestead quality. You're not going to get the life out of it. So, um I'm going to go ahead and get this chain changed out. Uh, something else to note, too, uh, on your equipment. Whatever you get, make sure it's serviced in your area. You know, a lot of our homesteads are way away from, like, the cities. Uh, you don't want to be traveling 20, 30, 40 miles to get to a location just to buy an air filter or a chain or a bar for your particular saw. So if there's not a still or an echo dealer in your area, um, you know, really pay attention to what's around you. You know, like I said, stay away from... Uh, a lot of the cheaper box store stuff. Um, get something quality and make sure it's commercial grade. Uh, both of my large saws are Echo Timberwolves. They're 59cc saws. I run a 20 and a 26 inch blade on them. Um, the, I was a little worried with the 59cc and the 28 inch blade. Uh, it, I was worried about how much it could pull, but it actually does quite well. Uh, something else to think about too on your any of your equipment. Um, first off, when it comes to a chainsaw, I've seen time and time again, people would run like a, uh, uh, a transmission fluid or something of that nature through for their bar and chain oil. Um, stick to an actual bar and chain oil. The viscosity or the thickness of the oil is actually a little bit thicker, uh, saves the bar. Transmission fluid will actually disperse on the bar a lot faster, but it doesn't provide the lubrication properties needed to save the bar and chain. Uh, we go through about 10 to 12 cords of firewood a year here. So, huh. Uh, when it comes, these both of these saws have been with me for six years now. Uh, so when it comes to uh, average use, I'd, you know these saws have held held their worth very well. Uh, something else to think about, and it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be VP racing the 50 to one fuel that that you buy, uh, but I highly recommend a non ethanol fuel. Uh, there's ethanol fuels if you're not using your saw on a daily basis, or even if you are. The ethanol is very corrosive to any of the brass jets inside the carburetors. Um, so, and it, the reason I choose the VP is not only do I have access to it at a fairly cheap rate, uh, it's also a 94 octane uh, non ethanol fuel. So, uh, we can reduce some detonation there, make the saws live, live a little bit longer. Let me uh, get this chain swapped out and then I'm going to get you guys on cutting some firewood. All right, I wanted to get you all in on another little helpful tidbit here. Uh, one of the things that I do to keep my chains in track, I've got uh, several different saws besides these. These are my two main ones. Um, but I take an old um, uh, coffee can, and of course I label the top. Of course it's CS590. This is my 20 inch chain uh, container. And of course I got all my labeling on top of that container. So whenever I go in the shed, I can grab the container that I need. And uh, we will, uh, now I, one thing is, is the chains will, uh, I got to keep my sharp ones and the dull ones together. And typically when I run out of sharp ones, I'll sharpen them all at once. Um, but this is a freshly sharpened one here. So we're going to get it on.
All right, so let's talk about one of our bigger pieces of equipment here on the homestead. Uh, we searched for a long time for a tractor to fit our needs. Uh, at first, we went for used tractors. And of course, I searched high and low from Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, uh, referrals from different people. Uh, we found a few that we actually liked, went to go look at them. They were already sold or um, they were actually some of them were not even there to begin with. Uh, we had lots of issues uh, purchasing used equipment. So for our homestead, we've got about a little over five acres worth of hay meadow that we cut hay on. Um, so we were looking for something pretty sizable. You know, I didn't really know what I wanted at the time. Uh, now that I know, or for what I have, I know what actually we need. Um, if you're going to get into any kind of hay equipment or uh, hay, harvesting hay, 60 horse at the minimum. Um, you know, we're here in 2022 now. About in 2016, the U.S. government started mandating uh, the diesel exhaust fluid on any equipment. I believe it's 90 horse or larger. Uh, if you can stay under the 90 horsepower mark, I'd highly recommend it. Def fluid is not something that the equipment needs to run. But if the system's inoperative, the government has the computer to program basically to shut it down. So uh, stay under the 90 horse, you know, keep something reliable. Uh, as far as the equipment itself, this is a K60A. Uh, once again, just like a chainsaw, we are we have a case dealer um, just right up the road here. It's on our normal route. Uh, one, I bought this as a package tractor. It had the bucket with the front end loader, four wheel drive. Uh, one thing I did do is I upgraded the front end loader, which I'm very happy that I did. Um, uh, we have a good friend of ours that said, hey, the, the, if you can upgrade the loader, do it. You're going to highly I appreciate it later on. And boy, do we, we really do. Let's take a look at the front end, the loader here. Okay, so for our front end loader, our uh, quick attach on the front, this is probably one of the main things that I use on this tractor. Obviously, the PTO with the shredder, box blade, anything on the three-point hitch on the back is... Uh, you also use very popular, but as far as up here, the grapple, I have what they call a third function. And basically on the joystick that controls everything, you've got, it comes with typical two functions where you have a tilt for the bucket and then a lift for the main arms. Uh, this would be your third function. It's electronically controlled via a switch on the handle. And that's actually gonna operate the, the grapple or the bucket operation here. Uh, one of the things, uh, there's several different quick connects, you know, so I can put a bucket on this front end loader, I can put a drill on it, I can use the grapple. Uh, they make several other attachments. I've seen some scissors that they use to cut trees off at the ground. Um, whenever you go to interchange these, there's several different styles of connect. This is what they call a skid steer quick connect. And basically I can flip these levers up and drive out from underneath it and rehook to something else really quick. Uh, it probably takes less than a minute's worth of time to go from the bucket to a grapple to a hay fork or a forklift forks or anything of that nature. So uh, definitely same thing, more equipment, the grapple. Uh, this is something that is local to us. Uh, Armstrong Ag is uh, manufactured right up the road. Not that we would ever need any pieces for this. I mean, most of this I could repair and weld on myself, um, but the hydraulics or uh, you know maybe some of the other fittings we'd have to purchase locally. So let's look at the side by side. All right, so the final piece of equipment we're going to discuss today, I would say is used more often than anything else on our homestead. Uh, this side by side, this is a Kawasaki mule is what they designated the numbers 3010 for its size. Um, this is a 2004 model and I believe we've had it since like 2008. Uh, so this is, we've had this well before we actually even had the homestead. We used it for duck hunting and several other things, deer hunting as well. Um, and I cannot give any more respect to any piece of equipment on our homestead other than this one. Uh, really, relatively minor repairs over the, what, the uh, 12, 14 years that we've had it. Um, it's an 18-year-old machine. Um, I mean, it's been tried and true. I haven't even put a belt on it. I've got one in the shed just in case it decides to go one day. But uh, it's really held up well. Maybe we put some U-joints or some front brakes on it, front wheel bearings. But for... Uh, for being 18 years old and probably close to 2,000 hours on it, uh, I really have no complaints whatsoever. Uh, this thing we are in every single day. It's holding our garden equipment. Uh, it's our chainsaw. It's a workbench anywhere as I go on this property. Uh, I, I mean, it's a mobile workshop for me. All my tools are constantly in it. We're moving mulch. We're moving uh, compost, uh, any of our chicken equipment, you name it. I mean, this really helps us out quite a bit. Uh, like I said, almost every single day on the homestead, this vehicle's got a key in it and it's working, doing something. 
So this is going to be our three main pieces of equipment, the chainsaws, the tractor, and the mule. Uh, of course, there's lots of other ones we'll get into maybe in other videos. But if y'all have any further questions, comments about any of this, just let me know and I'll be more than happy to answer them. So if y'all haven't done it yet, go ring the bell, subscribe, leave a like. We'll see y'all next week.